So today we're going to jump into part two of this. You'll notice in this rational function, we have a degree of the numerator that's one more than the degree of the denominator. This won't yield a horizontal asymptote, but what we call a slant, or as our book calls it, an oblique asymptote. And I'll probably use those words interchangeably. So let's go through and find all the pieces to this. We'll start by finding our intercepts, just like we did before x-intercept and again through yesterday's video we noticed that our denominator always multiplies out when we set things equal to zero so it's basically like setting your numerator equal to zero so I have x minus 2 times x plus 1 is equal to zero I have two x-intercepts of 2 and negative 1 a y-intercept of 2 fifths Uh, vertical asymptote, set the denominator equal to zero, so x equals five. And now we're going to create this slant asymptote. To get a slant asymptote, we do long division of the numerator by the denominator. So if you remember polynomial long division, we say x times what is x squared? That's x. I multiply, get x squared minus 5x. I take and subtract that whole piece out, which gives me a 4x minus 2. And then x times what is 4x? That's a plus 4. Multiply through, that's 4x minus 20. Get a remainder of 18. But in this case, we're looking for a slant asymptote, and a slant is the equation of a line. Well, our answer up here is in the form of y equals mx plus b. So this is my slant asymptote. So what we're going to do is take now and plot all the points that we've been given as far as intercepts and asymptotes go. We have an asymptote at 2 and negative, or sorry, not an asymptote, but an intercept at 2 and negative 1. I have another one at 2 fifths, so it's going to be somewhere right around here. And then I have a slant of x plus 4. Roughly that's that and a vertical of x equals 5. Let's just continue this out here. So now what I've got to do is from what I've been given, go ahead and sketch what I can of the graph. And actually in this problem it's, it's pretty darn easy. I know my graph is only going to intersect the axes at these points. And I know that it has to be a function, so it has to pass the vertical line test. So what I really have is I have two parts to this graph, my right and my left, even though it looks like I have four quadrants here. So to the left, it's passing through these three points and then approaching the two asymptotes. The slant or oblique asymptote is going to act very much like a horizontal asymptote. In other words, you can cross it. The only thing you can't cross is what limits the domain, and that's the vertical asymptote. Now, on the right side, there are no intercepts. I calculated none. Therefore, it will never cross the x-axis, which means it can't be in this bottom quadrant here. It has to be somewhere up top. So that was a pretty easy one to do once we actually found our slant asymptote. Let's go to the next problem. Again we notice top degree one more than the bottom. I will find my intercepts. That's once again basically like setting our numerator equal to zero. Unfortunately in this case nothing squared is negative three so there are no x-intercepts. y-intercept
is going to be three halves. Vertical asymptote. I get x equals negative two. Slant. We're going to have to do our long division, so I take x plus two, divide that into x squared plus three. Notice I'm leaving a placeholder for my zero x term. In fact, I'll just put zero x right here. X times what is x squared? That's an x. Put in my x squared plus 2x. Going to subtract that out. I get negative 2x plus 3. X times what is negative 2x? That's negative 2. And as we stated before, that's all we really need for our slant. Y equals x minus 2. Go ahead and plot all that. No x-intercepts, y-intercept of 3 halves. Put a little dot there. Vertical asymptote of negative 2. And we'll again call that a vertical asymptote. Slant asymptote we said was x minus 2. So let's go ahead and find that. So negative 2, rise, run. Something of this nature. Alright. And once again, this is going to graph out pretty easily. I know it's not going to cross the axis ever in terms of the x-axis, but I know it has to go through this point here. So I go ahead, follow that asymptote, follow that asymptote. On the left side, it never crosses the axis. Got to be somewhere down here. All right. Next example may take a little bit of factoring up top. Let's see if it does. I get a... 2x, x, 2 and 1. And all this is going to help me with is with my x-intercepts. So let's do that. Find an x-intercept. Set that numerator equal to 0. So 0 equals 2x plus 1 times x plus 2, giving me two values of negative 1 half and negative 2, which are my x-intercepts. Y-intercept is 2 sevenths. Vertical asymptotes is what, uh, negative 7 over 2. And now let's do our long division. Two x times what is two x squared? That's an x. I get two x squared plus seven x. Subtract negative two x plus two. Multiply by a negative two, and there's my equation of my line. Graph my points: negative one half, negative two. Vertical, negative three and a half. So those are my intercepts. I have a, whoops, those aren't my intercepts. Sorry, got to lose that last point. I have a vertical at negative three and a half, so that's here. Sorry about that. I have a y-intercept at 7 or 2 sevenths, like so. 
and then I have my slant of x minus 2. So let's say this is negative 2, rise over run, somewhere over here. Very similar to that first problem we did. It's got to come down, cross, go through, approach. And on this side, it's not going to cross the axis, so somewhere over here. All right, moving forward. Let's go ahead and factor this again. Now you'll notice in this problem, we've got a different situation. We have common factors, which means this reduces and leaves me with x plus 3 equals y. This is the equation of a line, even though I started with a rational function. And what's going to happen is, because I have these common factors reducing out, when there are common factors, Reductions create what are called holes. Now, where do those holes occur? They occur where the common factor reduction existed. So in this case, since x plus 2 reduced, I set that equal to 0 and get at negative 2, I have a hole. Now, where does that hole exist? The hole exists at an x value of negative 2 and a y value of what's ever left in the function. So in this case, I'm going to plug negative 2 into what's left. And get y equaling 1. So at negative 2, comma 1, there's a hole in my graph. And let's see how this plays out. Here's my graph, and as we stated before, my graph now has this equation that looks like a line. So I'll go up to 3, and I know my y-intercept's there, and I do a rise over run situation. So I go up 1 over 1, and I draw a line. However, when I get to the point of negative 2 and 1, I have to create an open space because I've created a hole in the graph. So it's a line with a hole at negative 2, 1. Let's do one more. Got a lot of factoring to do on this. I'll just do that over here. You'll notice in this case, we are not going to have, we're going to have some kind of horizontal asymptote, most likely, because I don't have a degree of the numerator greater than the degree of the denominator. I got 2x, x, uh, let's go 2 here, 3 here, uh, negative positive. Bottom, I'm going to have an x. And then let's see, what do I have left? x squared plus x minus 6. So I'm going to have an x, x, 3, 2, positive, negative. So again, common factor, whole, at x minus 2 equals 0. So at x equals 2. So... If my hole's at x equals 2, I'm going to plug 2 back into my function that remains. So that's the 2x plus 3 over x times x plus 3, which is going to get me 7 and 10, 7 tenths. So my hole is at 2 and 7 tenths. I have a vertical asymptote of 0 is equal to x and x plus 3. 
I have a horizontal, which gives me 0 and negative 3, and I have horizontal. You'll notice I have 2x to the first, and in the denominator, I have an x and an x plus 3 being multiplied, so that's really like an x squared, which means my horizontal is y equals 0, because my degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. So let's go through and start to sketch this out. Got a lot of pieces in place. We have a vertical at 0. We have a horizontal at 0. You'll notice I didn't do my intercepts. I should probably do that. I have an x-intercept at negative 3 halves, and since I have a 0 factor in my denominator, or an x factor, and I plug in a 0 for all x's to find my y-intercepts, there are no y-intercepts. Alright, so at negative 3 halves, I'm going to have an intercept, vertical asymptote, also at negative 3, like so. Um, and I think that's all I've got. And then again, I'll have a hole at 2 and 7 tenths. That might help a little bit. There's 2 and 7 tenths somewhere around here. All right. I think that hole is going to help out a little bit because since I know it has to go around this point but not cross the axes, I can take and throw this guy up this way, but I don't know anything about either of these two coordinates, so I'm going to have to take and pick probably one, two, three points to figure out what happens. So I'll look at f of negative 4, f of negative 2, and f of negative 1. and see what happens to the function. When I plug in a negative 4, I'm going to plug into this black equation over here. So I get a negative, a negative, and a negative, which is a negative. So to the left of negative 3, my graph's going to look like this. When I plug in a negative 2, which is in this region here, I get a negative over a negative and a positive, which is a positive, which means the graph comes from the positive region to this point. When I plug in a negative one, which is around here, I get a positive, a positive, and a positive, which is a positive. I think I did this wrong. Positive. A negative, sorry and a positive. So that's a negative. And this is going to come down here. And that's what the graph's going to look like. Alright? I think that's going to do it for today. Make sure you fill out your summary and do your mind math lab problems and we'll see you tomorrow.